Bob, good to have you back on. Welcome back. What's up, B BK? How are you today? All good. You ready to go? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Jacob DeGrom, we've been talking about him all this week. Give me your take on DeGrom. One of the biggest disappointments in Major League Baseball the last 20 years. Let's just be honest. I mean, where he started, what were ex the expectations for him? He was supposed to be BK. The next Tom Seaver, let's just be honest. Tom Seaver, 2.86 lifetime ERA, one of the greatest who ever told the rubber. And DeGrom got off to a start where you thought, my God, you know, two NL uh, Cy Youngs, a career ERA of 2.53, and he just couldn't stay healthy. He goes to Texas. I I'm not mad at the range for rolling the dice saying we need a, a, a ace at the top of the rotation. And what happens? He gets hurt. Yeah, but he's, he was never that guy. Seaver was putting up, like, again, I don't want to compare inning totals, you know, from the old days where, you know, when they were pitching 250 innings a shot. But even so, he was never, like, that consistent guy. He had a couple of years where he was good. He had two years where, where he was great. And, I, again, Rob, I watch a lot of Mets baseball. I'm right here in New York. I end up seeing him, like, the guy's just – he never ready just to take his start in the rotation. He was never that guy, and he found three miles per hour more. The analogy I used was he's a dragster. You want a NASCAR. You want a, you want a car that goes 200 miles an hour, not 350. You don't need that. He blows out. I think it's going to continue the next five years, and he's under contract now for another five years. Well, I think, um, first of all, I think it is different eras because guys don't pitch that many innings, and, and we get that. It, but even but when he was out, but he's not even, it's not, he hasn't hit 100 in five years or four years now to beat five that. years. Yeah. But still, when he's out there, the numbers are good. They're spectacular. When he's yeah. out there, then he's not out there long enough. And what I think might need to happen is maybe he needs to do with John Smoltz and become a closer, and maybe he's just not cut to, out to be a – a, a, a starter, Could be. BK, yeah. what if you yeah. put him out there and pitch an yeah. inning a night or every four nights or five nights a week? I think he could be spectacular. I like that. you got to do something because he has not shown the ability, hey, I'm going to ratchet it back, sit 96, and try to go six, seven innings. He won't do it. He comes back for rehab starts throwing 102. So, like, he's, n he's not going to do it. That's kind of his fault, and not, not the injury, but he's up there flying too close to the sun. All right, Luis Arise at 403. Are you big on 400? I'm big on it, but I just don't think it's going to happen. If Tony Gwynn couldn't hit 400, I don't think anybody's hitting 400. He came close, what was it, 394, uh, as pure of a hitter as anybody. And, uh, you know, I just think it's really difficult. And, and the other part that happens that's different now, and you know this, is the scrutiny and, and when you get closer and closer to it, how much people pay attention to it. And I think that makes it harder. I mean, he's a fine hitter. He's bad. Yeah. What's his lifetime batting average? 316. Yeah, very so it's high not for now. Like he yeah. Flew. You know, yeah, it's, that, that's a, it's not like he's a fluke hitter or something. He's just having some crazy year. Right. He's a really good hitter, doesn't strike out, but I don't think he's hitting 400. Rob, I think, yeah, 400 is, is, is just crazy. He's barely there now. It's a whole season. I think he's better than we even think, and I, I've got to write something on this eventually. His OPS plus, and the OPS plus are weighted runs created plus, they level that to the run scoring environment. He's actually the equal to Gwynn, what Gwynn was doing. And I thought that couldn't be because there were fewer runs being scored when Tony Gwynn was playing. But it's actually close, and very few guys are hitting 300 now. Maybe pitchers will give you more of that than the risk-reward pitch. Um, there might be something to that where, like, they're not caring about the dinking and dunking single. They should, but that's not where the game is at. I love that he's doing it against the grain, though. No, I agree, I agree with that. I mean, it's good to see. You're right. I think that was a big thing last year for me uh, when, when uh, there was talk about Otani and Judge for, um, for the AL MVP just had just batted over 300 and was a power hitter. And, right. and, and you don't have that a lot this uh, anymore in baseball. Yeah. Guys hitting over 300. Hey, the Marlins, speaking of a rise, they're seven games over 500. They're ahead of the Mets and Phillies. Are you buying? You know what? This is one of those, are they baloney or filet? I'm not buying them. Not, not only are they not baloney, they're bologna. Because I'm not going to give them the why. <laughs> because they just got fat off of a couple of bad teams. They beat up on the Oakland A's. They beat up on the Kansas City Royals. It was just a series before that. They played the Padres, lost two out of three, got outscored like 20 to seven. I'm not buying Miami. 
uh, you know, a nice little run. Mm-hmm. Um, take advantage of the schedule like Tampa Bay did when they started the season. But am I buying them? They're not close to filet. Yeah. I, by the way, when it's when it says Bologna with the GNA, I, that usually they charge more. I'm buying. You know, it's a little more expensive. Mike Lowe might disagree. Oh, is that a little more? Okay. I, it's, a little, it's a little more expensive. Then I'm gonna give them yeah. the bologna with bologna. the Y. Bologna with the Y. Uh, Mike Lowe might disagree. We'll talk to him about that. Now, you also told me Marcus Simeon. You say he's the best leadoff man in the game. Sell that to me. Just look at what he's done this year, which is incredible. Okay, the 25-game hitting streak, which just ended last night against the Cardinals. I get that. But uh, he was on base 33 straight games. He steals bases. He's driving in runs, 50 runs from the leadoff spot. And we're the first week of June. He hits with power. He has an average. I think he just dropped under 300, 299. BK, when you add, and he steals bases, you add all that stuff together at the top of the lineup, and he's not striking out as much. I'm not saying he's not going to, you know, depending on uh, the, the course of the season, but I like everything that he's done. And last year, maybe with the big contract and a little pressure to, you know, impress people or whatever mm-hmm. kind of got to him. But boy, has he played well from, from start to fin- finish so far in this season. You know, Rob, I don't disagree with anything you're saying, but you're still wrong. Um, you, he's like the fourth best leadoff guy in baseball. He's having a great year, but Yandy Diaz leads off for the Rays. I don't know if you consider the Rays in Major League Baseball. A rise has led off, I think, the last six games for the Marlins. He's got a 450 on base. Ronald Acuna is probably the best guy, and he leads the league in steals. And then Mookie Betts, who isn't up there, they're, they're all out hitting Simeon. Four, he's, like, he, he's, he's not even fourth. He's the fifth best leadoff hitter in baseball. No, he's not. When you when you add everything that those guys don't, and I get Acuna. Those and, guys don't want. They run bad. better. They even run better. But I'm Arise talking about but everything does. that he's done. How many of those guys got 50 RBIs already? I mean, for real. Like, from the leadoff spot? A, a leadoff guy isn't supposed to drive in runs. The fact is, he has better teammates because the Rangers lead the league in scoring. You can't, t- you'd actually for leadoff only. Not, not even taking fielding, leadoff, which means you want a little speed, but you want to get on base, you want a little pop. You would take Semyon over Acuna or Yandy Diaz or Mookie Betts or Lisa Rise with a 450 on base? Yes, I'm, I'm taking all right now. Well, you're not going to score as right many runs. Now, with what he just put together, a 25 game hitting streak, a 33 game on base streak. Let's not poo poo that. Can you give me any of those guys doing those kind of things, BK? He's no, making, you cannot. He's making more three games in outs. a row from the leadoff spot. Right. He's getting on base, but he's not getting on base nearly as much as those other guys. His on base is lower than I think almost every player I cited to you. So he's not on base as much. He's making more outs. Yeah, but he, but, but, but he also has, I'm talking about the consistency of what he's been able to do 33 games in a row. And I understand what you're talking about with with the uh, on-base average, but he's still up there. It's not like he's 10th or 12th. He's right in the mix. And when you add the RBIs, add the power, add the batting average, add the 25-game hitting streak, I'm put the taking board, Marcus put the, Simeon put the board up right one more. Now. Put the board up one more time. I know you're, going, you're like dog with the RBIs. Yandy Diaz is only being out hit by Aaron Judge right now. We just talked about Luis Arise being a monster and Acuna – like, he runs better. It's not easy to shield. You don't see the board. <laughs> what do you got up there? I don't it's see better. it. What? It's, it's safer. It's safer. Just stay away from that. Rob, you're still the best. Thank you, Rob. We'll do it again. All right, BK. <laughs>